Welcome to the Lightning 50 e-commerce growth hacking podcast brought to you by Bright Pearl. Want to turn your business into a cash generating machine? You've come to the right place. This bite-sized podcast reveals the technology secrets fueling the world's fastest growing online brands. And for our host, we have retail industry expert, Caroline Baldwin. She'll be sharing her own wisdom and experience as she interviews high growth e-commerce brands to uncover their secret tech tools and tips for success. Let's get started on supercharging your growth. Here's Caroline. Hello, and I'm Caroline. Welcome to the Lightning 50 e-commerce growth hacking podcast. And today we are speaking to Mark Tweed. He's the brand director at Cyber Jammies. Mark, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing? Very good. Thank you for, uh, for inviting me. You're so welcome. Are you are currently, where are you currently at in the world right now? Or are you at your warehouse or in your office? Where are you, where are you talking to us from? I'm talking from our office in Chelmsford in Essex. So, Mark, you've had a really interesting couple of years. Your brand has um, completely catapulted, hasn't it, as we've been forced to work from home. And many of us tend to do that in our loungewear and pyjamas. For those of um, our listeners out there that haven't heard of Cyber Jammies, why don't you um, do a little introduction to your business? Not a problem. So, the brand has been going for over 20 years. And it's had some nice steady growth for, through uh, the first part of uh, the first 15 years. And it, as they say, um, sometimes the uh, best overnight successes take about 10 years to get going. So um, that's pretty pretty true of our brand as well. So we are totally dedicated and fix, fixated on making great nightwear. Our quality has always been what we pride ourselves on. We started making ladies' nightwear and we've now extended that to the whole family. And, you know, we're all about great quality fabrics, sustainable fabrics. We make our product in a in the most ethical way we possibly can. Yeah, we're all about doing doing things the right way. And look, we you know, everybody spends eight hours or we all hope to spend eight hours sleeping. We want that to be a very comfortable night's sleep. Um, so that's where our dedication to to the product comes from, and that's really where a lot of the growth has come from. Yeah, the, the last two years we've been very lucky. I'm sure. So your your growth rate for 2019 to 2020 was 372. Um, percent I'm sure our listeners can uh, put some of that maths together themselves in terms of the timing of COVID. But talk to us a little bit about that, especially because you know you guys have been around for quite quite a while. So those couple of years must have been very interesting for you. Uh, they have been. They've been a challenge, but but in a good way. So listen, we we've been incredibly fortunate that when so many other industries have had a tough time of it with with lockdown actually everybody's new work wardrobe became their loungewear and their nightwear so yes things were going we th- we thought things were going great up until covid kicked in but the the growth rates since then has been um, pretty astronomical and you're, that means that you're sat at number 10 in the Lightning 50, um, which is just absolutely fantastic. How does that kind of make you feel as a, as a company? Look, I think any recognition, particularly from outside your own business, makes you feel great. I'm well, look, sure. we've, we've been working incredibly hard. So when you then see other people outside recognizing that growth and recognizing the success that you've got um mm-hmm. it's look it's great for the team it's it's great for us as individuals yeah and it, and it suggests that we're, we're doing a lot right so i have down here that you are one of the fastest growing fashion brands in britain and you know the uk is known for its fashion brands and there's quite a few of them so that's a really a fantastic claim and explains a lot of that growth so let's dig down a little bit into that growth a bit more what are some of the secrets behind your brand's successes in terms of technology and digital do you think yeah i've got to, i've got to talk about bright pearl it's been instrumental uh, in our, in the growth of our business, so um, I think if for, for any brand to grow significantly, automation is critical. Um, I don't think you can really grow at any significant rate without it. So our business probably ten years ago was very spreadsheet based, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you know it's it's slow and painful when you, when you're going from one spreadsheet to another, etc. And it's not efficient. Ever since we've we've had Bright Pearl. It's just enabled us to get on with what we're good at. Um, so, you know, from a from a how have we managed to achieve significant growth quickly? Um, without automation, we would not have been able to do it. So, Brightpool is the hub of our business. We've got we've actually got two websites. In addition to Cyber Jammies, we have another website called Fable and Eve. Both have seen similar growth because they're both both nightwear focused. 
We've automated with additional retailers um, during that period of time as well, such as John Lewis um, and Next. And none of that would have been possible without automation. So, you know, you go from processing 100 orders a day to to over thousands. Yeah, it's it, you want as limited interaction with those orders as possible. No, indeed. And when when you talk about these, I've you know you've I've diversified these channels, haven't you? You've gone from D to C, and now you mentioned John Lewis and Next, and you you provide wholesale as well. Talk to me a little bit about the challenges behind that, and you know the different kind of customer data sets that you get, and how you you need that automation to be able to make that work. Well, with with all businesses, cash is king. So one of one of the the biggest challenges is making sure the cash is coming in and that you're on top of it, particularly with the wholesale business particularly with some big retailers such as John Lewis and Next, etc. You want to be in a position to know how much you're owed and when. The same goes for wholesale. Look, the, the probably one of the biggest challenges over the last two years is within wholesale, you know, stores have been closed. So, you know, those businesses have fa- fast faced um, far bigger challenges than we have. But what that has meant is that not all stores have necessarily been in a position to pay in a, in a certain way. Being in control of how much we're owed and when is is um, is pretty critical. No, I'm sure. And um, you also another challenge. I'm sure it must have been was um, moving to a third party logistics company to sort out your warehouse. What was it about two years ago, just before the pandemic? Yeah. So that must have thrown another spanner in the works and getting used to everything in that in that respect. Talk to us about how that's plugged into everything. Well, uh, yeah, it was it was pretty much the most stressful couple of weeks um, I think I've ever had in business. We We'd been planning the move to a bigger automated third-party logistics warehouse six months before COVID kicked in. So at the point when COVID, we, we all went into lockdown, we were due to be moving. Um, so the first thing we said was, look, we can't move yet. But the existing, what, what happened as soon as we went into lockdown is everybody started trying to buy off our website and the existing warehouse, more or less, you know, from a physical point of view, almost fell over. And they said, I'm sorry, but you you literally are going to have to move your stock. So we physically, you know, with, with very limited, pretty much myself at that particular moment in time, I was packing up the stock and I was uh, getting it ready for the for the big trucks to come and collect it. Um, I didn't want too many people, in, you know, sort of to be in and around it when we didn't know quite what the, what the impact of COVID was going to be. So it was a bit of a stressful situation. But the one thing that I would say is we've, we've moved to a third party company called uh, Synergy Retail Support. They are all about automation. So they scan the garments in, they scan the garments out. You know, if if someone goes to pick something that's that's not right, it beeps, makes a very loud noise to suggest that that should not be the item that was picked. They were phenomenal throughout. They made life very easy, even though that we were in the, the depths of, you know, being locked down, et cetera. And it's just, you know, without them, we would we would not be sitting here in the in the shape that we are. They very quickly got our stock received. We were trading within a couple of days of having given them the stock. And instantly we went from having to restrict how many orders we took to let's go and sell. So without yes. without that ability to be able to scale up in an automated way, that then meant we weren't checking order for order had a had a huge impact on the business. So just being able to like turn that button 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 on and, and after being what well, it sounds like you were evicted from your for your blast warehouse for being for scaling too we quickly. Were, you yeah, unfortunately look, it's um you know, it, it, we all talk a lot about cultures in business and you need partnerships of similar cultures. Um unfortunately we'd our our culture of wanting to grow the business didn't necessarily fit in with the existing guys we were with so but look each each to their own <laughs> and it's worked it's worked out for the better it now certainly I has. Think. <laughs> it certainly has so talk to me a little bit about uh, some of the new technologies you're considering to support your growth going forward from here you know you, are you looking at some of the the some really fancy future gazing tech or are there some changes you want to make to your website that are overdue what, what's next on your to-do list so we've got two major projects for this year. The first is we are changing platform for our website. So our current platform, again, has been fantastic to get us to this point. It's been easy to use, but it comes with lots and lots of restrictions that in the, you know, for, from our point of view, the one thing we want to be able to do is talk to our customers, but talk to them on a personal level, but in an automated way. And the current uh, platform just doesn't doesn't allow for that. So we're going to be moving to Shopify Plus. We've just started the development of that as of yesterday. 
Um, so in the next three months, we will be getting that sorted. That will have a pretty significant impact again on how we talk to our customer, but more importantly, how we see our customer. So we'll be able to see their journey. We'll be able to be far more nuanced in, in how and the way we talk to them. So currently, we will set, tend to send general emails to most of the database all at the same time. Inevitably, not everybody is going to want to see the information on that email. What we want to be doing is talking to someone that says, right, I'm I'm a blue pajama wearer. Okay, do you know what? We've got the perfect blue pajama uh, for you. We want to be following up with flows that are quietly working in the background with our email set up. So we use Klaviyo. That's been amazing for us. Yeah. Again, automated. So all of these things are ticking away in the background. Shopify Plus is going to do that. The other thing, the other major project is we've just started work with More2, uh, a marketing company that are renowned for the work they do in terms of scaling very big, you know, sort of medium to medium to large scale uh, retailers and making them even bigger. They are all, all about data as well. So they're going to go through our customer data and say, right, okay, this is how you need to be talking to these customers. Do you know as much about those customers as you should do? So yeah, those are, those are the two major projects for us, both of which we think will have a pretty significant impact on, on the business as we go forward, all of which link nicely into Brightpill. <laughs> I'm sure. And you were talking about um, cash being king earlier. And going forward, I guess it's a case of data is king, surely, yep. in terms of your customers and remarketing to them. And um, are you tying in social media into this as well? I can imagine um, your 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 pajamas and such do really well online. Yeah. Look, we've we've been working hard on our social media for for years. It's 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 definitely a, a tough one to crack. We spend a good amount of money on our Google ads and our Facebook and Instagram ads. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it, they're all critical um, as part of the ongoing process. It's another way of us talking to to the uh, to the customer. The one thing I would say is, with all the changes, uh, first starting off with GDPR, but obviously now with iOS, those particular channels are going to be harder and harder to assess. So I think you know any data that we can get through our website where the customer has directly said, "Yes, I'm interested." I want you, you can talk to me. Um, I think that is going to be the key for going forward. So anything that we can do to encourage our customers to come directly through our website and talk to us um, will, will be the, the main key as we go forward. And that's the thing, isn't it? Engaging that customer is just so important because it is so easy. And to, the, the customer is so much more empowered these days to just be like, nah, I'm not interested in talking to these people. Turn off the notification on iOS yeah. or on your, or your Instagram or I don't want this newsletter anymore. So I guess having that market message and giving them that extra value all the way through to keep them engaged so you're there when they're ready to buy a new pair of pajamas or nightwear is really important for you guys yeah i mean look you you um you mentioned you know how did you get to this significant growth well automation is one but constantly trying to talk to new customers but just as importantly keep talking to your existing customers in a way that they're that, that they're going to find appealing so they're going to say great you've got something else great you've 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 you know i love what you've i've just bought from you you've just given me something else you've either given me a matching robe that goes with a pajama or you've given me a scrunchie or you've get, you know the, the smaller items that you can add is is it that you're a nightdress wearer and we can say okay we've got another six of those that you might not have seen so it's just about making sure that we keep ourselves relevant to the customer yeah i mean look from a social point of view we we we're, we're now looking at tiktok which you know, me me personally, <laughs> not necessarily some of these social media things are things that I'm gonna I'm gonna be using myself, but certainly from a business point of view, we need to be looking at them and and, and saying how are these relevant to us. You know, you, we just all need to stay on top of those trends, don't we? As you say, even it's same. I'm with you. TikTok kind of baffles me a little bit, but we all need to stay on top of them um, because as soon as we get used to TikTok, there'll be another one it along will. the line. I'm it sure. Will. I think Snapchat has oh. passed me by a little bit, but um, you know, it, it, my son's on it. That's what I can. That's about as much as I can tell you. <laughs> You rank 10 on the Lightning 50 list of fastest growing brands. What does that recognition mean to you, the business and your employees? As um, for, From our point of view, it's amazing. So any recognition is great recognition. Um, we recognize our own success internally. But when, when you're hearing, you know, hearing it from outside, it makes all the more difference. Um, you know, we've we've added we've added it to our um, the bottom of our email signatures. That's how important it is to us. So we want people to see it and hear it. It's something for us to celebrate. We celebrate it as a team. 
it's yeah, it's it's great to be recognised that we're all working incredibly hard. We want to continue working hard, and any time that you get recognised, just gives you that extra extra push to keep going. Oh, Mark, it's so great, so great to hear, um, and good luck with all of the exciting projects that you have going on this year. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you very much. And to our listeners out there, we will be back with you with another podcast very soon. <laughs>